Almost every day, lorries leave Britain's south and east coast ports on the first stage of a journey that will take them all over the continent. The letters TIR, Transport International Routier, International Road Transport, are a new passport. Under international agreement, the TIR lorry and its load, like this one arriving at Dover from Poland, does not pay import or export duties and taxes of the countries through which it passes. Its international carne, the lorry's passport, sees it through all customs points. The cargo, sealed by customs after it's loaded, is not examined again until it reaches its destination. It all adds up to an easier, quicker flow of goods, especially fresh foods such as meat and fruit, from one end of Europe to the other. In this way, grapes can be loaded at a vineyard in Italy with a guaranteed delivery to a wholesaler in Birmingham 36 hours later. What's the number of roads? Because I've never been here and I didn't buy yet a map of England. The crews of these TIR trucks, one British firm runs a fortnightly service to Tehran, a round trip of 7,000 miles, are the elite of the long distance lorry drivers. 33 year old Jim Hudson, for instance, from King's Lynn, has been driving heavy lorries for 11 of his 17 years at the wheel. When he leaves for work nowadays, it's not for a day or two trip in Britain. Most of his time is now spent taking loads to and from the continent, and he's usually away from home for a seven to ten day stretch. At the transport company's office, his next trip has been prepared. Route, ferry crossing, documents, and the 101 other details. The only driver who is any good to us on this sort of work is a mature man, over 30, married preferably, definitely with 10 years heavy driving experience and responsible. The lorries are worth about £10,000 each, the load can be worth £12,000 and we must be sure that the man is of the type to look after them. Jim's mate and co-driver Tom Carter is checking in the last of their load. 6,000 brace of Norfolk pheasants bound for Milan. A 16-ton refrigerated load, this company's speciality. The 1,100-mile trip out should take three days. But when they leave, they don't know where they'll be picking up their return load. So they could be away for 10 days or more. While they're still in England, last-minute instructions come from the office over the radio telephone. Have received message, will carry out instructions, any problems, will phone office. Over. TIR transport to and from Britain has developed rapidly over the last few years, as new roll-on, roll-off ferries to the continent, like this Swedish one, have come into service. British Customs check the lorry's load and then seal the doors on this 12,000 pounds worth of pheasants. For Jim and Tom, the overnight sea passage to Holland gives time for a rest. Soon after dawn, the ferry is making its way up the canal to Amsterdam where the vehicles drive off. For each trip, a TIR lorry must have a permit for every country it passes through. Apart from checking this permit and the lorry's seals, Continental Customs also collect a road tax of about £8 a day. It's not the job of British Customs to collect road taxes, and foreign lorries are expected to get their licences in advance. They don't always do so. 
Averaging 50 miles per hour on the Autobahn, Jim and Tom get well into Germany on their first day's drive. With their valuable load, they park for the night under the eye of the police. TIR drivers do not earn much more than long-distance lorry drivers in Britain, but while on the continent, they get three pounds, 10 shillings a day expenses. They prefer the work, they say, because of its variety. Also, they don't have to load and unload as at home. Autobahns are closed to lorries on Sunday, so they get a day off. They're away again first thing on Monday morning. The roads on the continent are far superior than they are in uh, our country. Uh, the cafes, the hotels, they're all very clean and the, uh, the public on the in continental countries are obliging. Covering about 450 miles in a day on the autobahn, they're soon crossing the border into Austria, where carne and seals are checked again. Lorries are passed through these border points only during the daytime, so late arrivals, often from all parts of Europe, have to park at the frontier for the night. Being in a different country nearly every other day, how do these British drivers cope with languages? We have a bit of a problem with the language, but I speak a little bit of French and a little bit of Deutsch, and uh, we get by. Further into Austria, and the autobahns are replaced by narrow, twisting main roads. This lorry recently had new springs fitted. The question is, will it go under this low bridge? No, she is not going to make it. It means backing up the 40 foot long monster to find somewhere to turn and then make a detour. A side road takes them through the narrow street of a village, and soon they'll pick up the main road again, leading up into the Alps. With six forward gears and three braking systems, plus an engine brake specially fitted for this sort of work, Jim and Tom climb above 4,000 feet to the Brenner Pass. From now on, it'll be downhill, which is even more tricky with a heavy lorry, on the winding roads into Italy. Fuel, refrigeration plant and tyres must be checked. What I like about this continental work which I do, to the various places where I deliver, is the manner in which the Continentals work there, they start the job and get on with it and don't keep haggling about and stopping for tea breaks. Three days out from Norfolk and the load of pheasants is being delivered on time and cleared by customs in Milan. But more important for a load such as this, the health inspector checks that the cargo temperature has been maintained throughout the journey. And now for the return trip. Yes, there is a back load. 15 tonnes, 1.5 tonnes, tomato puree from Anzio. Anzio? That's to the south. Let's get onto the autostrada again. And where shall we stop tonight? That's what TIR means. Two men and a hefty lorry, shuttling backwards and forwards, making Europe smaller.